from our Washington DC studios, this is Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Hannah Zuberi. Our top story tonight, 57% of Americans disapprove of President Joe Biden's Israel policy. That's according to a recent New York Times Siena poll. Only 33% approve of Biden's approach. The most significant disapproval was amongst young voters aged 18 to 29, who traditionally favor the Democratic Party. Nearly 75% of that age group expressed dissatisfaction. Around 44% favor a ceasefire to protect Palestinian civilians, while 39% advocate continuing military operations in Gaza. About 50% of respondents believe Israel is not doing enough to prevent civilian casualties, and some see this as intentional. Meanwhile, pressure is mounting for a ceasefire as the U.S. and Israel secure limited international support through a recent U.N. resolution vote. At least 60 protesters were arrested Tuesday at the capital Rotunda while demanding a ceasefire in Gaza and opposing a contentious congressional bill. The proposed bill allocates billions of dollars in aid to Israel while simultaneously introducing stricter immigration policies along the U.S.-Mexico border. Protesters included prominent figures from pro-Palestine and Jewish organizations, as well as representatives from progressive climate, labor, and immigrant advocacy groups. Around 100 people demonstrated at the Capitol. For nearly 30 minutes, they voiced concerns peacefully within the rotunda, but were later removed by Capitol Police officers. Attacks on commercial ships by the Houthi group in Yemen are posing a severe threat to the global supply chain. Major shipping companies, including the Mediterranean shipping company, Maersk, Hapag Lloyd, and CMA CGM have suspended operations in the Red Sea due to security breaches. The Houthis have pledged to continue targeting Israeli ships in the area, citing solidarity with Palestinians in Gaza. As a result of these attacks, vessels are diverting to the Cape of Good Hope, circling the African continent. That adds 4,000 nautical miles to their journeys and significantly affects oil and fuel shipments. BP temporarily halted tanker traffic in the Red Sea, causing crude oil prices to surge by more than 2%. In related news, Secretary of Defense Lloyd J. Austin has unveiled a new naval task force aimed at countering the Yemeni Houthi militant threat to global shipping in the Red Sea. This is after the U.S. Central Command reported a U.S. Navy ship stationed in the Red Sea recently downed a record 14 Houthi-fired drones in a single day. No major Arab nations have joined the U.S.-led maritime effort. Bahrain, a smaller island nation, is the sole regional power participating in the task force. Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates have declined to join, fearing their involvement may be perceived as protecting Israel. The 10-member coalition led by the U.S. includes the U.K., Canada, France, Italy, and Spain. Some of the world's largest shipping companies have been forced to reroute their vessels at considerable cost. This is after the Houthis targeted ships headed towards Israeli ports in solidarity with Palestinians. The group has demanded Israel allow humanitarian aid to enter Gaza. It has also called on Israel to end its brutal war on Gaza that has killed more than 19,000 Palestinians. Malaysia has banned the docking of Israeli vessels at all of its ports. 
Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim on Wednesday said the restrictions are a response to Israel's actions that ignore basic humanitarian principles and violate international law through continuous massacres and atrocities against the Palestinians. The indefinite ban on docking at all Malaysian ports will be imposed on any Israeli flagged vessel as well as those owned by Israeli-based shipping company ZIM. Ibrahim said that the government in 2002 and 2005 had allowed Israeli registered companies to anchor and later dock in Malaysia. Israel targets Gaza's Nasser Hospital twice in 48 hours. Details come after the break. Stay tuned and we will be right back. Welcome back. UNICEF reports that Nasser Hospital in southern Gaza has been hit by Israeli forces twice within the past 48 hours. The hospital, which is located in Khan Yunis, serves as a vital lifeline for children and women seeking safety in the besieged enclave. Overnight shelling killed 13-year-old Dani Abdul Mohsen, who had already lost her parents and siblings in the conflict and has been injured in a previous Israeli airstrike. UNICEF spokesperson James Elder has emphasized the dire situation in Gaza, noting that it remains the most dangerous place in the world for children. He's calling for an immediate ceasefire and the urgent provision of essential resources such as food, water, medicine, and shelter to prevent further child casualties. Elder also highlights previous statements by Israeli officials indicating a focus on damage rather than accuracy. He expressed concern that such statements were being realized with each child life lost. A complaint filed with the Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights against the Ann Arbor Public School alleges that a middle school counselor referred to a Muslim student as, quote, terrorist. Filed by the Michigan chapter of the Council of American Islamic Relations, the complaint involves an eighth grader at Tappan Middle School. The incident occurred November 14th when the student asked another counselor if he could drink water while waiting to speak with his guidance counselor. The counselor reportedly responded that she did not negotiate with terrorists. The student promptly voiced his concerns about this discriminatory comments based on his Muslim and Palestinian background. He also said he no longer feels comfortable at the school or during meetings in the counselor's office. Ann Arbor Public Schools has not disclosed whether any disciplinary actions were taken against the counselor involved. Care Michigan expressed disappointment with the school's response, deeming it dismissive of the harm caused to the student and family. The school board expressed deep concern and vowed to address the matter seriously, emphasizing its commitment to combating discrimination in all forms. Colorado's Supreme Court has disqualified former President Donald Trump from running for future office. Trump is the 2024 Republican presidential frontrunner. The court cited the 14th Amendment's insurrection clause, holding Trump accountable for inciting the January 6, 2021 attack on the U.S. Capitol. The decision passed with a 4-3 majority. It marked the first time in U.S. history a former president has been declared constitutionally ineligible for elected office due to actions before and during their term. The 14th Amendment Section 3 was enacted after the Civil War. It disqualifies any officer of the United States who takes an oath to uphold the Constitution and subsequently engages in insurrection against the government. The Colorado justices rejected Trump's argument that this clause does not apply to him as the most powerful oath breaker. Consequently, the ruling prevents Trump from appearing on the presidential primary ballot, a decision likely to be appealed at the U.S. Supreme Court. 
In a separate case, a three-judge panel upheld the denial of Mark Meadows' request to transfer his charges in the Georgia election interference case to federal court. Meadows serves as the White House Chief of Staff from 2020 to 2021 under the Trump administration. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has signed into law a comprehensive package of border security legislation making illegal entry into the state a crime. The new laws aim to bolster border security, curb human smuggling, and deter illegal crossings. It would also fund the construction of the state's border wall. Under SB 4, local and state police can stop and arrest suspected illegal border crossers anywhere excluding schools and hospitals. Penalties range from misdemeanors to felonies with possible jail time and fines up to $2,000. The legislation passed by the Texas legislator last month is set to take effect in March. Abbott emphasized the need to address the surge in illegal immigration, citing the Biden administration's policy charges as a contributing factor. The development follows the temporary suspension of operations of the international railway crossing bridges in Eagle Pass and El Paso due to increased migrant crossings. Border authorities apprehended about 192,000 migrants between ports of entry in November, a 2% increase from October. An American Sikh lawyer claims he is facing hundreds of daily death threats despite ongoing investigations into a plot to assassinate him. According to a U.S. indictment, an Indian government official plotted to kill Sikh American Gurparwan Singh Punnu. The official, referred to as CC1 in an indictment, has also been accused of playing a role in the murder of another activist, Hardeep Singh Nijjar, in Canada last year. Ponu believes the threats are linked to his efforts in organizing a Khalistan referendum to free Sikh majority state of Punjab from Indian rule. Social media posts compare Ponnu to Qasem Soleimani, the Irani general killed in a U.S. airstrike. Ponnu, labeled a terrorist by India in 2020, is advocating for a separate Sikh state and organizing a symbolic referendum in California next month. His situation echoes that of fellow activist Avtar Singh Kanda, who died mysteriously during the alleged assassination plot against Punu and Nijjar. Al Jazeera TV's AJ Plus show has claimed the prestigious title of Outstanding Lifestyle Program at the 50th Annual Daytime Emmy Awards in Los Angeles. Launched in 2018 by senior producer and host Yara Almoji, the show explores the intricate relationship between food and society through short documentaries. The winning episode titled The Awful Truth About No Trespassing Signs delves into the history of trespass laws following the abolition of slavery in the US. The episode featured TikTok sensation Alexis Nicole Nelson, known as the Black Forager. It's the first National Emmy Award for AJ Plus and it puts it in competition with industry giants like Netflix, NBC, and Magnolia Network. During his acceptance speech, Al Muji called attention to the humanitarian crisis in Gaza and mourned the loss of colleagues Samir Abu, Abu Daqa and Shirin Abu Akle. Clips from Al Muji's speech have gone viral on TikTok and Instagram. The award-winning episode can be watched on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, with short clips also available on TikTok and Instagram Reels. That's all from our Washington, D.C. studios tonight. Thank you for tuning in. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates. For more content, keep watching Muslim Network TV or visit muslimnetwork.tv. Assalamu alaikum and good night.